beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed I particularly want to honor all those who have taken the time and the sacrifice to come. Um, you came because the Lord asked you to come. You came because you heard of the things that God is doing in this place. Let me give you one guarantee up front. You will never be disappointed. Yeah. This is not a cinema hall. This is not an amusement park. This is where God produces real miracles. This is where God transforms people. Believe me when I tell you, you will never be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for those following us online, may God bless you. The Lord will touch you from whatever part of the world, whatever time zone. The Lord bless you in Jesus name. Matthew chapter 7, please just want to charge our hearts tonight it's good to be back home we had a great time in abia we returned a few hours ago thank god for the great and mighty things that he is doing you know when when all is said and done please look up we'll go to the scripture shortly but when all is said and done i really want us to understand that we do the things we do truly because we love jesus let it be at the back of your heart. For God so loved the world that he gave. For the saints so loved the Father that they do the things that they do. So all of the sacrifices and everything that we commit ourselves to doing is proof that we love the Lord. I just thought that someone that would inspire someone already. That when you look at the things that you do, sometimes it doesn't make sense the sacrifices don't make sense but when you are motivated by love then whatever it is that you do for his majesty you are consoled already that is worth the price hallelujah matthew chapter 7. we read from verse 9 from verse 9 to 11 is projected can we read together one to read or what man is there of you uh-huh whom if his son asks bread will give him a stone next verse or if he asks a fish will give him a serpent it's a question hold on hold on jesus is talking with the people and this question is an attempt or was an attempt to correct something jesus remember we have taught again and again that he came as the revelation of the father it's important for you to know this until jesus manifested there were gaps in the understanding of god they didn't know whether god was responsible for certain things that happened or otherwise so they would attribute things 
that were of the devil anything that was superstitious or supernatural they believed that it came from god are we together now and so jesus is attempting to establish the benevolence of the father jesus is attempting to correct the notion listen carefully that the father's proposition of his love for his creation were a lie and jesus will use an expression that is very serious he used things that had to do with food are we together now he said which of you please give us go back to verse 9 or what man is there of you whom if his son asks for bread will give him what a stone number two next verse or if he asks a fish will give him a serpent next verse if ye then being evil being evil that means there is a level of kindness even an evil nature cannot take out of a man are we together like you see a wicked person and a car capsizes in an accident and they all run together they are evil but there is still an element of kindness so jesus is saying although you are evil you still have the fortitude to be responsible to be kind and to be benevolent he says if you been evil know how to give what good gifts so bread is a good gift fish is a good gift your supplies your needs met is a good gift are we together now it says if you know how to give good gifts to your children how much more shall your father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him this is a statement this is a point jesus is trying to prove because until then the people had received a philosophy that god was selective number one number two that god did not have the fortitude to be so lavish in his display of love and jesus comes as the expression of god and he says no let me correct that although you are evil i don't see your children begging for bread are we together now that they will not ask you for bread and you give them a stone they will not ask you for fish and you give them a serpent a stone and a serpent can do the same thing they can kill you are we together now a stone can hurt you a stone can kill you a serpent can beguile you a serpent can strike you and he says am i am i i am i am not a man yet it is in men even the fallen nature could not erode that fortitude in men to show kindness the leader of boko haram has a family and we've never seen the wife pasting something on the internet and say don't mind this stupid man i am hungry as terrorists and wicked as they are they know how to take care of their families if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more listen very carefully your father in heaven will give good things to them that ask him is it not in your bible that says he that paraphrasing now that he that fails to supply one version says to his household has denied the faith are we together and the bible says is worse than an infidel meaning that part of the responsibility of fatherhood is to ensure that your family members become a reflection of your benevolence it's not enough to say you are kind and benevolent your family members and those under your watch must testify of your kindness are we together if i run a bakery for instance and i have children and you see the children loitering around a shop hoping for a little slice of bread that is not just an indictment on the children it is it is safe to use the children to assume that i'm a greedy and a stingy father because i cannot run a bakery my children should be tired of eating bread 
not to stand in front of a shop hoping to get a slice of it our inability to justify God's kindness is a concern to him and this is one of the things that the Lord wants to correct tonight the father is not withholding good things listen very carefully it is difficult to receive from God when you are in doubt whether or not it is within his power and it is consistent with his will to bless you I will continue to drum it again and again that the primary purpose for our loving and seeking God is not things our relationship with God is higher and greater than things are we together however it is also true that our father is glorified when we bear much fruit the beauty listen carefully when any mentor trains a student or trains a protege it is in the ability of that protege to reproduce the result of the mentor that's his joy he says hearing is our father glorified john 15 and verse 8 when ye bear much fruit he says so then shall ye be my disciples there is a level of results that we must command as believers listen carefully and for as long as we fail to demonstrate these realities we will keep misinterpreting God and it will be safe for our loved ones and our territories to build all kinds of thoughts and philosophies about God so he puts together a convergence like this to correct notions that who told you I have stopped lifting men come for the miracle service who told you I have stopped wiping tears are we together now pain has a voice and sometimes the voice of pain and the voice of of the frustration that comes as a result of lack of notable results in our lives and our Christian experience the voice can be so loud listen it will numb the voice of the Holy Spirit to the point that if they are telling you God can do this and that you just look have you seen people who have been so frustrated every time you are telling them God can do something they just look at you and when you're done they say are you done please walk out of this place then they start telling you from year this to year that I serve God from year this to year that I gave my all I the first missionary that came to this state used my car and look what I have and God says that is a misunderstanding of who I am I will not want you to misunderstand me as a person we continue to strive to correct any wrong image of the ministry that is being created for instance, those who try to manipulate money from people in the name of the ministry, as most ministries would have, you know, people will parade in the internet as Joshua Selman, for instance. Every time I hear of such kinds of things, I don't keep quiet and say, God, do whatever you do. No, I, I, I make efforts to see that whatever security provisions need to be in place is in place. This is me, a man, an ordinary man. Do you think God's jealousy will allow him to let creation keep writing things about him that is not correct? If we do not allow the power of God to correct these wrong understandings, our children will come with an understanding of God that is inaccurate. Have you noticed that the average, I think it starts from teenagers. Our teenagers now almost have no regard for God because something about their experience has proven that God is not faithful if you been evil know how to give good gifts we have our little children in this ministry and we love them so so much as soon as we share the grace you see them jumping on me and jumping on everybody and they don't look and say apostle um, am I littering your cloth? Am I, they just jump and they are happy. They can, they can feel free knowing you are too responsible. Listen, it's an understanding. 
sometimes they come and they just fly expecting to be held they are not they are not they don't ask you whether you are tired they don't ask you whether your hand is paining you they just jump and hope you hold them and although in our human nature we still have imagine how irresponsible a man will be for a lovely child to just jump and then he looks at him and he falls and he says good for you you will know that i don't play with children no I'm helping us to understand before I begin to minister that it is God's desire please listen it is God's desire to see you lift up your prayer request and watch every single one of them answered it does not take you to hell and it does not reduce your Christian life are we together now away with that thinking that when God answers our prayers, it will make us leave him. No, it is when there is already a heart that is not truly inclined to God. You don't need to have results to leave God. When your heart is not positioned on God and your love for him is in doubt, anything can take you away from him. But let me tell you this, my brothers and my sisters. When you love the Lord with all your heart and your heart is pegged at seeing that his kingdom come, there is nothing he will withhold from you. You've heard my story. I've shared with you that the Lord told me, son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. It is his will for you to have the supernatural results that you seek. And it's important that we give God room to do these things in the lives of people. If you're a preacher, please listen. It is good to teach people the word. It is good to help people grow. It is good to provide a platform for spiritual enlightenment. But sometimes people don't need knowledge. They need real results. There are times that, listen carefully. There are times that you don't go to meet a patient in an ICU. And tell the patient, while you are almost dying, take note of the following. Number one, next time don't stay around mosquitoes number two and the patient is gasping for breath there are situations that don't need counseling there are situations that don't need advice there are situations that need a head-on collision with the power and the grace of god there are people sitting right now looking at me smiling but with death sentences in the name of medical verdicts that's not the time to start giving people any any advice you give people love the lord in 10 years make sure you are consistent the person says i'm dying right as i'm dying right now take me out of that situation and then i can give you my attention to mentor me and build me hallelujah i believe in miracles i really believe in miracles i believe in the manifestation of the power of god i believe that the power of God can be made visible here and now. I believe that God anoints us to provide supernatural solutions. You are here because of the things you have heard God do. You are here because of the lives you saw him change. And let me tell you, your case will not be different tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. But I just want to encourage you so that you don't come hoping will god bless me will god lift me is he interested in the joy that my family will have when results come is he interested in the new level of anointing i will receive as a man of god is he concerned that my church is going down is he concerned that everyone i laid hands on was not healed is he concerned that i am going down spiritually the God we serve is a lifter. He does not bring people down who love him and stay true to him. So it's important for you to be ready to wave goodbye to all of the challenges that you made so much sacrifice to come here to present to God. Don't sit down and hope that, oh God, um, well, let's see what you will do. No, no. Remember, remember, I have taught you, for those of you coming for the first time, listen. The very factor that is responsible 
for results in the kingdom is the anointing his divine power your faith only connects you to the anointing it is not your faith as it were that brings you results your faith is like a host that connects the tap to the plant that needs refreshing but it's the power of God and let me tell you sincerely where the power of God is lavishly allowed to find expression then darkness must flee then lives must change then situations must be transformed are we together now expect the hand of God do you know it's amazing how that you will see people gathered like this and you will think just because they are looking at a preacher they are expectant many people are used to God not working in their lives to the point that they don't expect anything they may look and say amen and hope that they will get something there is a level of hunger and desperation like Jacob where you tell the Lord I did not leave the east the south the west I didn't travel out of this nation to come into Nigeria come into Zaria just to watch people get healed get blessed and share the grace and go back no there is a level of insistence insistence give us Hebrews chapter 11 please and verse 6 just a charge and then we'll minister tonight but without faith the Bible says it is impossible to please him the him there is God for he that cometh to God this is a rule this is a spiritual law that he that comes to God must believe that he exists and then number two that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him do you not know that transporting yourself from the great distance you came from is proof of diligence is proof that you trust God you held that report you held that cancer report you held that this and that report and you continue to believe God our assignment is continue to align in prayer and true sacrifice to say Lord continue to multiply your anointing so that the issue that could not be solved in January can be solved in March I've taught you how the anointing works and let me just teach it very quickly for the sake of those of us who may be encountering this ministry for the first time I taught you that the anointing works like money listen very carefully that you only can solve spiritual problems or problems that are within the level of the grace you carry the same way you can have 10,000 naira 10,000 naira can buy you a few things it cannot buy you a car it cannot buy you a house but it is still money if you need to buy a house you need more of the same thing to the amount that can purchase the house every challenge in the realm of the spirit has a level of grace and anointing that can solve it just because you are anointed does not mean all problems will bow I gave an example yesterday while I was teaching in Abia and I told them that you can bring someone for instance in a wheelchair and keep the person outside and a man of God can even lay hands on the person and the person may not be healed you he go back sick are we together now you take the same person and keep that person in Benny Hinn's overflow not the main bowl overflow and right there he comes and whilst he's singing the person gets up the difference is not God the difference is the extent of the anointing how God anointed Jesus not that Jesus was anointed the information is not that he was anointed look at the extent to which he was anointed you are a blessing when you stay with God to be anointed to the degree to which most problems that come are under the level of your grace People have come to me and with all humility, as soon as they begin to talk, I discern what their challenges are and I know that this problem is far, far below the level of the grace that I have. Sometimes I will not even pray. I will say, go, it's done. So the, the man of God's assignment is that while you are building your expectation, while you are paying so much to transport yourself to be here, while you are fasting and opening your heart, our own assignment is to stay with God, to say, I've seen your grace before, but evil is multiplying. There are situations that know there are superior levels of graces that can solve it.
when someone loses 10 million naira and comes to you and says i'm about to die i don't know whether i'm alive or not but the last time they told me i was dying help me at that point that's not the time to start teaching him and say okay be patient this is you can teach him financial principles but he needs that raven that fed elijah to come to him quick let the raven feed him first when someone tells you my life is not moving forward all doors are closed and because of that my father is about to leave my mother they have concluded that the divorce will happen in the month of may that's not the time to settle down and start saying oh this and that line upon line precept they are, they are, a, a family is about to be torn apart oh how we need the power of god in this generation we need the power of god more than falling down we need the power of god more than the jargons and the stories that we talk let me tell you in the final analysis it is his divine power that is the giver and if that power is not resident within you to the degree that it takes to provide supernatural solutions then you will continue to see people frustrated if you're a man of god and you came here listen to me you are not a blessing when you are not anointed let me repeat myself you are not a blessing when you are not anointed you may be a good person you may be a sincere person it takes more than sincerity to be a blessing the messianic prophecy isaiah chapter 61 please give it to us isaiah chapter 61 the spirit of the lord is upon me and then it says because the lord hath anointed me the lord had done what please talk to me koinonia the lord had anointed me so the factor there is the anointing and then it begins to list all the possibilities that can now happen on account of the anointing it takes the anointing to preach glad tidings to the meek it takes the anointing to bind up the brokenhearted it takes the anointing to proclaim liberty it doesn't take a mouth to proclaim liberty it takes the anointing you can have the mouth and say be free but it takes the anointing to proclaim liberty to the captives it takes the anointing to open up prison doors next verse it takes the anointing to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and then the year of vengeance of our God look up please it takes the anointing to comfort all those who mourn verse 3 to appoint to them that mourn in Zion so even in Zion there are those who mourn it didn't say to appoint to them that mourn outside Zion they are in Zion yet they are mourning to give them beauty look at what the anointing can do Hi. the anointing please listen listen families listen the anointing can give a man beauty 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 for ashes many families know what ashes looks like when a family has 10 people and no one is employed when a family has 10 people and the highest earner in that family earns 2000 per month ashes but the bible says by the anointing you can give men beauty beauty you came for koinonia with ashes and god says keep your ashes here take beauty as you are sharing the grace you are walking out with it and then you continue to see your life you know you have carried beauty by the results that follow it says until the spirit be poured upon us from on high then it says the wilderness shall be counted for a fruitful vine and then the fruitful vine counted for a forest beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness and then it says that they might be called the trees or oaks of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might be glorified god is still beautifying the lives of people my brothers and my sisters don't get used to your situation 
I know you've trusted God in spite of it. But God wants you to now continue trusting him without it. It's, it's honorable and it is noble to trust God in spite of it. But what if he takes the pain away? What if he takes the situation away? What if he takes the predicament away? It takes a wicked man of God to watch what is going on in this country and to watch what is going on in the times that we live in and act as if nothing is happening to people. There are real problems. Poverty is a real problem. Young people now have high blood pressure because after spending 10 years for a four-year course and graduating with a 2-1, you are roaming around the street like an arm robber with your certificate that seems to have no value. Look at the, you know, we, we've, we've been talking about, I don't know if it's happening only in Zaria, but we've been talking about the increased rate of suicide, especially among young people. When you sit down and try everything and it does not work, you just tell yourself, I'm better off dead. And you, at least, my money cannot rent a house, but it can buy a rope. What can it buy? A rope. And the spirit of death will help you to buy a rope. And you find a tree and hang yourself. And you who should have been a blessing to a family has now died. And then people come to church with that kind of pain. And the man of God says, don't worry. It's not all about your needs. It's about Jesus. I agree. It's about Jesus. But man was not designed to bend that law indefinitely. There has to be an opportunity given when the Spirit of the Lord will step into the lives of people. I will never, never watch people go through things that the power of God can change and act as if nothing can be done about it. No, sir. Whoever told you that the power of God cannot do anything about the demons that oppress families? Whoever told you that the yokes of darkness can remain unhindered? I know you have prayed. I know you have fasted, but I've told you why it did not happen. It takes a level of grace. Whoever told you favor has stopped working. Don't generalize pain. There are men who have found Goshen, a place of safety. There are men who have found Bethel. There are men whose lives are like Beulah and Hephzibah. The planting of the Lord. When God plants a garden, will it not grow? He says the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. This is the place of encounter. I want you to know that this is a place where God increases your convictions. This is the place of surrender. Do to me what you want. This is the place where your life will change do to me what you want listen when the lord turn again the captivity of your family when the lord turn again the captivity of your destiny he says we were like them that dream how beautiful is it to see the other side of pain how beautiful is it to see the other side of a man's trusting God? How beautiful it is to see a man trusting God for grace. Lord, I know you still anoint men, but where is the anointing? When you see the other side of that man. How beautiful it is to see a wilderness turn into a fruitful vine and turn into a forest. I believe in miracles. I believe in the hand of God. I believe the supernatural can invade the world of men and correct and adjust things. I believe in 24 hours God can change a man's life. Listen, I believe in the law of process, but I believe in speed too. I believe God still lifts men. 
I believe God still uses men to make statements in a territory. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And God says, come, let me use you. Let me show men that I am still God, the lifter of men. I believe this. I believe that God is a healer. I believe he's a deliverer. I believe when men lose things, they can get it back. Yes, sir. Including time. Including time. I believe that when men lose things, they can get it back. I believe God can anoint ordinary men. Men who are just available. But the level of grace is not there. But I know there is a place a man can come to where you encounter the power of God. Everywhere is not the same. No. God is everywhere, but he does not manifest his power everywhere. I believe in the power of God. I was sent not only to reveal his face, but to reveal his power. To let men know that he's still alive. To correct misunderstandings about God. Please listen to me. I want to charge your faith before we pray. I believe that challenges can end. I believe that problems can end. Did you hear what I said? I believe a man can sit down and search left and right and only see the goodness of God. I believe it. I believe it. I believe prosperity is real. I don't believe prosperity destroys a Christian. I believe in the blessing of the Lord. I believe in what it can do to your family. I believe in what it can do to your children. I believe in what it can do to your health. I know poverty causes sickness. I know it causes worry. Nobody will preach into embracing nonsense. No. I believe a man can prosper even as his soul prospers. I believe in speed. I believe God can compress what should happen in five years in one month. I truly believe it. I truly believe it. I believe God can restore time. When a woman has been barren for seven years, if she gives birth to one baby, we thank God, but it's not a statement enough. When she gives birth to triplets, God took nine years of space in three, three years and compressed it in one year. Now, that's victory over time. The hardiness of the hearts of men will require some dimensions of results to break their pride to honor God. Please listen, let me tell you. We are not going to use stories and noise to get people to Jesus. Wealth is a weapon. The anointing is a weapon. Favor is a weapon. Mercy is a weapon. Wisdom is a weapon. What are you fighting with? Desire, you will not win. It takes you being equipped with the spiritual arsenals that have been made for the victory of the saints in light. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. I believe a man can weary the devil to a point where he will let you go. I believe you can live in a territory and create your own climate financially, spiritually. I believe it. Listen, out of everything I'm saying, throw away the ones you don't believe and open your heart to the ones you believe. I believe a believer can serve God better in an atmosphere of comfort. When your children's school fees are paid, you will serve God better. Don't let religion come with the pride of men and pretend that it does not matter. Yes, I know that none of these things should affect our love for God. But let me tell you the truth. There is a level of pain you continue to have that can harden your heart towards God. It takes time to know God. 
it takes time to serve God and that's the time the devil does not want to give you you will never have time to serve God when you are moving around chasing money you will never have time to serve God when you are moving around lobbying a way to, lift, to be lifted vain is the help of man people of God please hear me God did not gather us tonight to waste our time he gathered us tonight to make real the things in our lives that pertain unto life and godliness. Can I tell you this? Whether you believe in what I said or not, it does not change the truth. The truth was buried. It took only three days. It came out. So whether you believe in the truthfulness of what is said or not, you embrace poverty and see what it does to your life and your family. Embrace mediocrity and see what it does embrace sickness and see how much you will spend per week your entire resources when you are finally broke then the person will die is that sickness why will it ten, take 10 years to build one house is that a testimony a prostitute will sleep with a man Overnight and wake up by the next day with estates and houses and everything. Let's be careful the things we say about God because many of them are not true. Please hear me, especially for our precious visitors. Don't magnify your challenges and come hoping God will change your life. We are talking God here, not a doctor, not a consultant, not an architect, not a monarch, the God of the universe. You may not be sick in your body, but who told you he cannot change your life? Do you not know he's called the father of spirits? That God can speak to a man while you are here and compel him to bless you. That God can give you a dimension of grace that you didn't enter this building with you. And you turn back and on Sunday you climb your pulpit as usual. And suddenly fire a new dimension of grace. Do you believe in what I'm sharing? If you being evil know how to give good gifts. Let me tell you, you can hold on to the hands of God and say it was never about your hands. It was about your heart. But tonight, I need your hands too. In addition to your heart, step in over my life. Step in. Please don't give up on God. Wake up. Don't give up on God. Don't come here hoping. I've waited, waited. The God of heaven can compress time. If you don't believe all this, there's no point being here tonight. Because we are going to pray. And you must insist that tonight is not the night when I will clap for anybody. I came to mean business with my destiny. Listen. When we begin to pray, I'd like you to insist that anything that does not bring glory to God in your life must leave this night. No matter what it is. Some of you may need to rewrite your prayer request again. Because of your pain, you've stopped writing some things. You just concluded that God, this one, just, just leave this issue. No. When it was time to resurrect Lazarus, he said, roll away the stone. Roll away the stone. Prove that you believe in resurrection by rolling away the stone. Two things men did. They rolled away the stone and they lose the man. What if they lose Lazarus and they found out he was not alive or he just fell and collapsed? Your destiny must open up tonight. It's not a blessing for people to doubt. The Bible says to be diligent in these things, to prove your calling and election, to make it sure. There are things that must be in your life 
to validate your call and your election. If you're a man of God here, trust God for grace, for God's sake. Just go and stand before people and just open a scripture and speak and close it and say, let's pray. No. That's what the scribes did all the time. But Jesus came and opened and read the messianic prophecy. And he said, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your eyes. They thought they would share the grace. He closed it and he told the guy with the withered hand. He said, stretch your hands. These things I write to you, O excellent Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach. Not teach alone. Do and teach. Can we pray? Please find a serious neighbor. And I'd like you to pray from the depth of your heart. The gift is only given to them that ask. God cannot assume you desire it. Please lift your voice in one minute and cry to the God of heaven. Outside, pray. Those following online, pray. Lord, visit me. Lord, visit me. Appear to me by your word as it were in Shiloh. Pray over your ministry. Pray over your business. Pray over your career. Pray over your destiny. Lord, I came that the gates be open tonight. Elam shalaka sala kaparatus, embra kato sekete kaparianda kapariasha. Pray, pray. That devil must leave my destiny today. That wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine. That wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine. Pray, pray, don't look around. That wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine. Place something upon my life, oh God. Place something upon my destiny, upon my business, upon my church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more prayer point. And the Lord will set this place on fire. Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21. Read with me please if you are a believer. One, two, read. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. Lord, do to me as you have spoken. You said many things about my life. Do it. I've heard you, but I need to see it. I've heard you, but I need to see it. Do to me as you have spoken. You said I am the head and not the tail. Do to me. You said with favor shall you encompass me as a shield. Do to me. You said you will restore the years the canker worm has eaten. Do to me, oh God. Pray, do to me, oh God. Visit my family. 
you said you will wipe away every tears you call 2019 my year of extraordinary fruitfulness do to me as you have spoken do to me oh god you said i will have my child in 2019 do to me as you have spoken look up I want you to receive every grace that the Lord is going to be releasing in this place because you see let me tell you every grace supplied to you is the strength to survive the squallow of any season and if you do not obtain the requisite level of grace for any season you will find out that your life will remain barren and unfruitful truly i came i came with all my heart tonight I, I don't want it to be a miracle service that we just play around casually please believe for something to come upon your life believe for a grace to come on your life see this thing about anoint if it's not there it's not there period very simple Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to pray. I will stand tonight praying on the grace for speed. Hold on, hold on. Please listen. There is a reason why I continue to say this. Many destinies are too slow to glorify God. Are we together now? When the devil cannot keep you at a standstill, then your progress will be so slow. It is said, I must walk the walks of him while it is day. That means I need to gain time. It says, For the night cometh when no man will walk again. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, there is a real grace for speed. If you have not seen it, it's because it's not on your life. There is a real grace for speed that vetoes the sentiments of men.
So I want to pray. I want to start from there. And then we just allow the Lord to take us. Be conscious of what comes upon you. Be conscious of what comes upon you. That's how God answers prayers. He answers prayers by putting something on your life that will compel creation to begin to act in a way and a manner that will change your life. Are we together? Please lift your hands and let me pray. I believe in the grace for speed. I have seen a measure of that grace and I know it is true that God can shift a man. I'm going to pray and release this grace and inside and outside that anointing and the anointing works. Let me just tell you the anointing works. You will see people begin to run. It's, it's not anything superstitious. It is just the character and the operation of that anointing. We need it. The Lord put it in my heart. We need it for our businesses, ministries, and so on and so forth. Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. Right now, inside and outside, I stand by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And I declare right now, at the count of three, let this grace for speed that you have provided even for this season, let it rest on people now. I release that grace. Take that grace now. Please bring them out. Take that grace now. Inside, outside, everywhere. I activate the operation of this grace. I shift your life in the name of Jesus to strength dimensions in the spirit. Receive the grace for speed. Receive the grace for Kabakatalika Parusia. Receive that grace for speed in the name of Jesus and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab to Jezreel I command speed 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 bring them out speed hey labor help that woman please my God I'm still praying in the name of Jesus. It says, Ye have encompassed this mountain for too long. Turn ye not what? I prophesy again. Like, like, like fire from heaven. Let that grace for speed mantle a family now not just an individual let it come upon families families receive speed i shift you i shift you in the spirit new level speed speed bring them out speed you will never be the same never be the same i'm not praying for individuals now i'm praying for families any families stagnated here i stand by the power of the holy ghost and i prophesy speed inside and outside i release speed right now now the Lord is that spirit he says and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing chains on people's legs chains and the Lord is saying the Lord is bringing deliverance now I'm seeing chains if you are under this category as I'm praying now the fire of God I'm seeing fire moving but not on people's heads, on people's feet. I decree and declare, is it not written that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. At the count of three, anyone whose destiny has been pegged by these chains, I declare be free now. Be free now. Let the power of God come upon you. Be free now. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost, be free now.
I want to pray. God, I'm telling you, I'm seeing this is I'm still seeing it. Chains. You see, let me tell you this. Look up. Look up. The Bible tells us that there are many things that should happen where the spirit of the Lord is. One of it is liberty. Do you know what liberty is? It's a separation between you and the obstacle that mocks God in your life. There is such a thing in the dealings of God with men. As giving men liberty. I want to pray. There will be a mighty deliverance right now. Many of you, this is what has plagued your life. If it is true that victory was wrought on the cross, then it's time to establish it now. Please listen to me. Just follow with the instructions. Be childlike in your heart and let God give you a testimony. Are we together now? He said, while men slept, the enemy came and sowed tears, sowed weed among the, I meant, uh, uh, among the, 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 the wheat. And we are going to destroy everything. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest. I'm going to pray and at the count of three, I will ask you to shout that name. Bye. Ah. I don't know what kind of bondage I'm seeing this night. But except God is not God, you must be free. Right now in the name that is above all names. I pray for individuals and families alike. It is true that there are yokes and ordinances of darkness. That have held men bound. But in the name of Jesus. Everywhere here overflow. One, two, three outside. As you shout that name that is above all names. I decree and declare. That everything that is not the planting of God. In your life and family must jump out of your destiny at the count of three one two three shout Jesus I command forces and your go now go now release destiny release destiny Every ordinance that is not the planting of God, let it go now. Let it go now. I'm speaking by what I'm seeing in the spirit. Let it go now. I'm seeing a vision of a man with a handkerchief wiping the tears of a woman and I know that this is, is symbolic because the woman stands for the bride, the church and I'm seeing the Bible says he will wipe away every tear I don't know what family and what person came here crying but the Bible says to comfort they that mourn. I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let an anointing come upon your life now. That terminates everything that brings tears. That terminates everything that brings tears. Bring them out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Young lady, please shift this one. You, lift your hands. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yahweh. Oh, yeah, yeah, say. Oh yeah yeah 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 o
your hands this yes you the Lord is granting you the spirit of revelation I saw something come upon your eyes and the Lord is saying he's taking you to dimensions of revelation let her go now now release her family now in the name of Jesus please listen I, I know that we don't have time, but please, I want you to, every time the Lord shows me this, then I know that he wants me to move around. I begin to see lights, a similitude of angels by my left and right. And it's, it's, a, very, it's a very mysterious way that God moves to touch people. When this begins to happen, all I need to do is you don't have to touch me, just move around your road. Listen to me, except God is not God. As he has anointed, as I pass your row, if there is anything that is not of God, it must let you go. Are we together now? So please, you pray. The moment we do that, then we'll begin to minister to the sick. These things are signs and wonders. They are supernatural. They are supernatural even by the Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Please... I just want you to believe by faith just believe by faith and then as I pass the Lord is going to touch you it will be the end of it's not something you can do anything about you are under the influence of the anointing are we together now thank you Jesus that everything that is not of God must give way in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare right now by the power of the Holy Spirit let there be liberty now liberty now in the name of jesus madam be free i take it out of your life now the hand of god is upon you in the name of jesus christ receive the lord is touching you i'm seeing god's taking something out of someone's stomach here is going now now i release it now be free now be free now be free now in the name of jesus be free now i'm seeing fire rising from this road just from i don't know who it is but fire is coming on someone from this road Right now, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare.
Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Something is leaving you. I'm standing here. There is the power of the Holy Spirit is setting someone free here within this place right now in the name of Jesus Christ. 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 In the name of Jesus, help that woman, please. She's holding a baby. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands here. Everything that must leave anyone, I declare it must go now by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Please, all of you here, just lift your hands. Right now, I stretch my hands. Now, something is coming on people right here. Be free now, 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 now. Now, 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 now. Keep praying, lift your voice. Overflow one, keep praying. Something is about to change in your life now. Please, you don't have to touch me. And I want you to help everybody close to you. As I pass the anointing of the Spirit, is touching everything that needs to leave. Thank you, Jesus. Be free now. 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 That anointing is touching you right now. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. I take it out of you right now. The fire of the Holy Spirit. Right here where I'm standing. Right here where I'm standing. The Lord is taking something out of your life. Be free. I'm standing here and the Lord is saying it is over. He's speaking to someone, it is over. An anointing is coming on you now. It is over. 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 Shalakata. Over. Madam, be free now. The power of God is touching someone here. In the name of Jesus, be free. In the name of Jesus, be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. Please help them help your neighbor so they don't enjoy themselves be free now in the name of jesus i declare and declare be free. be free be free be free every devil of darkness be free now. please open your heart and receive stretch my hands here anything tell be free now be free now be free now be free now in a chain a chain around here i don't know who that person is but i lose you now as i stand here i lose you now by the spirit of the living god i lose you now i lose you now hallelujah overflow one i don't know if i'm able to walk around is working now please believe it's a few minutes god is touching you you came here so that he will visit you it's impossible to not testify now please look at me overflow too i'm not going to pass in your midst i will walk right here and as i walk the power of the holy spirit will begin to touch you thank you jesus be free now be free now by the anointing of the holy spirit now 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 be free. I take away every reproach. I take away every reproach. You can't stand it. No, it's impossible. It's impossible. We're talking of the anointing here. Every reproach, go now. Every reproach, go now. Every reproach, go now. I stretch my hands here. Go now. Go now. Every reproach. Sela kapara to Every reproach, go now, go now. I release your destiny. All of you standing here, I'm passing now. The power of God is coming on you. Be free. Praise the Lord. Okay. Um, I'm going to walk around. I may not go row by row. Please, let your heart be open. Please, accept God is not God.
whatever it is that has held you as I pass by the spirit the power of God comes on you some of you will be receiving impartation it's not everybody that is going to just be free from whatever it is father in the name of Jesus honor your word right now in the name of Jesus Christ thank you Jesus right now before I may not be able to move, but please lift your hands. All of you, at the count of three, overflow three, let me hear you shout the name Jesus. The moment you shout that name, I'm seeing like, I'm seeing like fire coming out of people. This is something living people. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. From the front to the be free now in the name of Jesus. I release your destiny now. I release your destiny now. Madam, look at me. I set her free now. Release her destiny right now. That woman you are holding. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Listen, I declare to you. I, I release speed inside. I want to pray that prayer now. I don't know what has slowed you down. Overflow three. From the front to the back. May the grace for speed come on you now. May the grace for speed come on you now. Please, whether you're an usher or not, whether you're an usher or not, help anybody under the anointing close to you. In the name of Jesus, I don't know what has held your destiny bound, but in the name of Jesus, one more time, I want you to shout the name Jesus at the count of three. One, two, three. Be free now. Be free now. You came for a miracle service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please look at me. Overflow 3, look at me. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a family. I will soon walk out, but I just want you to know you are part of and that it doesn't matter whether you are inside or outside. The Lord is showing me a family here. There is a plague of sickness. Everybody from father to the last child. There is nobody who is fine. Right now as I'm speaking, the power of God is coming upon that family right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Overflow 3. I'm seeing the number 21. This is the healing anointing coming on 21 people. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. This is not a healing miracle. This is the anointing to heal. Right now, from the front to the back, upon gentlemen and upon ladies, receive that grace. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Please, everyone, overflow. One, two, three, main auditorium. Please open your mouth and begin to pray in the spirit and declare that everything the Lord is doing must find expression in your life. Lift your voice and pray.
Please lift your voice and pray. Please lift your voice and pray. 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 Voice and pray. God is changing something in someone's body. A blood disease. Just right where I'm standing. A blood disease is living right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You see, let me tell you, when, when we do these things, we are not wasting time at all. You need to see what the Lord um, did in some of those overflows. There are people who have real issues and sometimes, Madam, please lift your hands. I'd like you to shout Jesus as loud as you can. Let the name of the Lord be praised. The spirit of prayer. When I was in overflow three, I saw that grace. Would do an impartation, but it's in this season. There is a spirit of prayer and supplication that is coming upon the body of Christ, especially in Zaria. There is a spirit and there is a grace for prayer. In the name of Jesus. Take that grace now. There is a grace and there is a spirit of prayer that is coming upon the body of Christ. You don't pray just by self-will. There is an agency. I declare now in this main auditorium, overflow one, overflow two, overflow three, I stand by the spirit and I declare receive a baptism of this spirit. Flames upon your prayer life. Flames upon your prayer life. Flames upon your prayer life. I declare capacity in your spirit man. Capacity. I swing open the door for utterance in prayer. Grace to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Someone in the media stand is receiving a baptism of the spirit of prayer a fresh grace a baptism of prayer hallelujah you see let me tell you this please listen one of the systems for enforcing dominion on earth is the ability to legislate in the place of prayer and when the saints cannot pray and pray with understanding then nothing will change within their territory an attack on your prayer life is a real attack on your spiritual life nobody prays out of convenience there is a grace that must come upon a man to pray Hallelujah. If you are in ministry, I pray again for the grace for prayer. Let me tell you, if you are a man of God and you are not a man of prayer, you are not in ministry. Believe me, you are not in ministry. It's only a matter of time you will know you are not in ministry. I decree and declare a supply of the Spirit, an ability from heaven upon men and women of God that anyone who has the call of God upon his life whether you know it or not, the grace to pray, take it now. 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 The grace to travail, not give me tea and bread, not give me tea and bread, to pray destiny altering prayers. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We'll quickly minister to the sick now. Um, please listen. For those of you who are coming for the first time, we usually 
take prayer requests that I pray for now. And if you have not written your prayer request, please do so. You can get a notebook or just beckon on someone by your left and right to just give you an opportunity to write. While we are doing that, please, um, I will minister to those overflow one. Okay, the main auditorium and overflow two. Please listen. Main auditorium and overflow two. Um, when I ask you to come, you will come and stand in front here. You will be ministered to right here. Overflow one, you will stand in front of your projector stand. That away from the canopy to allow for space. Now, um, will I call it overflow 2B now? The overflow that extends to second equa. Someone will come there to minister. All those who are trusting God for healings, protocol ushers, please just coordinate them. You will stand in front there and then overflow three. Um, okay, there's another overflow down towards overflow three. Um, they will join the ones at they will join the ones at um, the second equa area. So let that be a single overflow too. And then finally, overflow three. You can walk to the front of your projector stand. All of you who desire to be prayed for. We believe in the healing power of Jesus. I believe in miracles. And our time is gone. You'll be ministered to very fast. And then we'll tidy up other things. Whilst that is going on, please, we're trying to conserve time. You see that a, a standard miracle service has to really be a vigil. If you want to do a thorough walk. You're not going to be able to do a thorough walk within two or three hours. But we're trying to just do the best we can do with the time that we have. While you are coming out, please, ushers, PR, join them or any other department um, to collect the, the prayer request. Those online, you can connect by faith if you're trusting God for healing and you can submit your prayer request and then it will be prayed for here. Praise the Lord. I believe in miracles. If you have written your prayer request, um, the ushers or you'll find a few people who will lift up their hands or lift up baskets and you'll be allowed to put it there. Now, very quickly, those trusting God to be ministered to um, for any kind of healing, make your way out quickly. Just like I've designated, please quickly, you come stand here by faith. Overflow one in front of your projector stand. Overflow three in front of your projector stand. Overflow two. You can join um, those in the main auditorium here. I hope I'm doing the right thing. And then overflow 2B and 2C, let me call it now. 2B extending to second equa and 2C extending to the gate of the third overflow. All of you together will form one overflow and then we'll minister very, very fast. Very, very fast so that we can finish. While you are doing that, please... Please let me advise, especially for those outside, as you are walking out, make sure your phones, your bags, and any of your belongings is safe. And then help those under the anointing. God is delivering people, setting people free. And let's just let him be God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Accept the people ministering to you, ask you questions. Don't worry. Just a touch and then you'll be back to your seat and check yourself whether you're on a wheelchair or on a crutch or sitting whatever the situation is whilst they touch and they minister just expect a miracle hallelujah father we give you praise in the name of jesus within the time we have we pray that your healing power will flow let the sick be healed transform our lives visit us in a new way glorify jesus in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Let incurable situations live. And I pray, God, that you give your people testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Nigeria,
Seen miracle jobs, miracle Emmanuel. jobs. The Holy Spirit is ministering to me, Emmanuel. releasing jobs for people, releasing jobs for families. Emmanuel. I 
saying the delay, the delay of employment is coming to an end for many people. The delay of employment. something strange that will begin to happen in the spirit people will start dancing in the spirit this is what I see it's a mystery it's going to happen by the spirit literally literally dancing in the spirit it's an operation of the Holy Spirit is releasing tonight he's doing a miracle in the midst of his people let's just flow with what the Holy Ghost is doing the miracle service for next week has begun already dancing in the spirit the holy spirit is moving people and influencing them influencing them by an ability that is greater shaboka supra is
to worship you forever you You're the Lamb of God. Let it be. What you do, Lord. Never you. Move the of God. and just be quiet in his presence. Just lift your hands to the heavens. Everywhere inside and his glory is mighty in this place. Mm. Just lift your hands to his glory. Just lift your hands. Of your presence, we your temple. We give you reverence. Now arise from your throne. By our praise as we glory in your embrace. Let your power now.
Lord, we wait on you. For you are that river that flows from Zion, bringing healing, bringing salvation. We have come tonight, O oh God, expecting you to bless us. We are not in a hurry. We are not in a hurry. We will wait. Oh, no. Just keep your hands lifted. For in your presence there's fullness of joy and I swear shall be restored as we wait upon I will wait For in your presence there's fullness of joy and our strength will be restored for we wait upon the Lord yes we wait upon the Lord oh wait on him there is strength coming upon you we wait upon the Lord we wait upon the Lord we wait upon the Lord Lord, we wait on you. You are drawing strength from the throne. Don't you think you are wasting time at all? This is part of the meeting. Already he's doing miracles. He's touching people by his anointing. Touching people by his anointing. No man is able to respond to your situation. We're invoking an anointing that is greater than us. Power that is greater than us. Hear the Spirit say unto me, lay your burdens down. Lay your burdens down. That's what the Holy Spirit is telling me. Lay your burdens down. The bills, the sickness, the frustrations. For I am able, said the Spirit of God. I am able, said the Spirit of God. Lay your burdens down. You have allowed your situations to overwhelm you. You have allowed your situations to be cloud your faith. I am still able. I am still able, said the Spirit of God. I am still able. That's what the Lord is telling us tonight. I am able. You may not know how the miracle will come to pass, but I am able. I am able. That's what the Lord is saying. I'm moving ahead of you into that area of darkness. The Lord is giving people miracles, responding to your individual needs. I may not know what they are, but you came for koinonia. The God of heaven is meeting men at the point of their needs. I go before you. I go before you. I go before you. I'm seeing what looks like a cleaner. God is saying, I'm erasing your mistakes. That's what God is saying to someone. I'm erasing your mistakes. I'm erasing your past. I'm giving you a new beginning. I'm giving you a new beginning. A new beginning. Yes, we
Lord is speaking to someone. I'm restoring your dreams and visions. That's what God is saying. I'm restoring. I'm restoring your dreams. Those encounters you used to have. Those supernatural encounters. You stopped writing for a long time. Because the visitation ceased. Tonight the oil is being opened and released unto you. It's like a fragrance. You are receiving it. It's coming upon your life. That's what the Spirit is saying. It's time to come back to the secret place. It's time to come back to the secret place. For someone the Lord is ministering. You used to spend time with me two hours every night. But you stopped. You stopped. There were all kinds of distractions. But the Lord is saying, I'm still waiting for you. In that place of encounter, I'm still waiting for you to show you great things. To show you great things. To show you great things. The Lord is speaking to a man here. You are an engineer. And he's saying, do not give up. I'm about to step into your life. Do not give up. The Lord gave you a word by January that he will honor you. But as it is, you've not seen anything. No projects, no work. But the Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's stepping in. Even in this glory. Stepping in in this glory. There are a number of ladies here. You really used to hear God with clarity. But all kinds of distractions came into your life and sincerely for a long time. You cannot say you really had God with a clear direction. But the Lord is bringing a restoration right now. That's what is happening. The hearing ears. God is opening your ears once again to start hearing the voice of the Spirit with clarity. I'm seeing... I'm seeing green grasses. That's what I'm seeing. The Lord is bringing freshness to your spiritual life. That life of staleness. Staleness. Carrying yesterday's grace, yesterday's glory. The Lord is replacing it with something new and fresh. things and glorify yourself. You have come tonight to experience His grace. The anointing of the Spirit is strong. Let's just flow with what God is doing. Lord, let no burden remain. Let no burden remain. Let no burden remain. According to your promises, I can stand secure. Would you carve upon my heart? This truth that sets me free According to your word, oh Lord Bring it unto me Verily, verily, I say unto you He that believeth on me Says the works that I do Shall also do Greater works than this shall be. Spirit of God, we thank you for your presence.
Lord is speaking a word to someone and he's saying the harassment comes to stop. It comes to full stop tonight. The harassment in dreams. That spirit that comes to you to oppress you. The harassment stops. The harassment stops by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The harassment stops. The harassment stops. But thou, oh Lord, had a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. But thou, oh Lord, had a shield for me. expecting a touch you're already touching people in the name of Jesus please everyone just lay your right hand on your tummy this is the instruction God is giving let's just act lay your right hand on your tummy please no instruments everything just stop let's, let's just obey what the Lord is saying just lay your right hand on your tummy don't mind me this is what the Holy Ghost is telling me. Now, there are many of you who are going to be receiving strange graces for the next level. Supernatural direction. It will come like fire inside and outside. Right now, oh God, confirm your word with power across this building and in every of the overflows. Right now, just keep your hands on your stomach. Miracles. Shabakataya. Let it leave the heavens and come to the earth. Miracles. Miracles. Everywhere. Outside, there is a mighty angelic walk. It's like an impregnation that is happening outside. Strange signs outside. In every one of the overflows. Strange signs of the spirit. Strange signs. There are two ladies at my back in the worship team. I see the power of God touching you right now. Strange signs, that fire from your innermost being. From your innermost being right now. The Lord is doing that miracle across the entire auditorium. He's touching people. Let's just let him do what he's doing. Because this is the answer to your prayer. This is why you have prayed. You can't stand it. Lord, let it leave your throne. Let it not be restrained in the heavens until it steps into the destinies of your people this is what they have prayed for they have fasted for it they have prayed they have fasted they have prayed they have fasted then let it come oh god let it come oh god the grace that can open strange doors strange testimonies strange testimonies shaka barakusia just the guitar just play minors just on the guitar go ahead in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not the bass guitar. Just keep your hands on your stomach. The Lord is doing a miracle. The Lord is saying, 
he's stepping into the finances of families this is what i'm hearing that's why he told me let the guitar play because he wants to speak the lord is doing miracles in finance in the finances of many families right now i'm hearing favor financial favor i'm releasing financial favor you will hear the testimony it will start in your life it will flow to your family that's what the lord is saying where are they oh god touch them touch them touch them touch them bring performance to your word bring creation to your word financial miracles financial miracles the lord is saying it's time to move to the next level he's speaking to families it's time to move financially there is a mantle coming i'm seeing it like a dew it's like the dew of heaven if it comes upon you it's your family he's talking about if it comes upon you expect it don't just receive expect a testimony i don't know how it will happen but if you are affected by this prophetic word then your family is under the influence of a financial anointing lord spare not your hands stretch it from the heavens stretch it from the heavens release financial miracles that's what the lord is saying for many of you it will do you like a dream you wouldn't even know how it will happen supernatural connections strategic alliances by the spirit of god meeting the people that matter meeting the people that matter financial saviors financial helpers joseph safari matthias rising for you rising for you This is what you have prayed for. It is important that you receive testimonies. You receive miracles. There is a lady you traveled from the south. Like a, one of the Yoruba countries. You came all the way from the south. And you came asking the Lord to visit your family. Right now, the miracle is already beginning for your family. Such an invasion of the spirit of God. It's bringing light to every area of darkness. There is a brother, the Lord is speaking. He's saying, leave the wedding date at September. Don't move it. Leave it there. I will make it happen. It will be by my spirit. The Lord is speaking to a brother. Leave the wedding date at September. Leave it there. Don't change it because of finances. I will move and go ahead of you. I will move and go ahead of you. I will move and go ahead of you. The Lord is speaking to a woman here, not a young lady, a woman. The dream that I gave you July 2012 is about to come to pass the dream that i gave you july 2012 july 2012 is coming to pass speedily july 2012 that dream that i gave you july 2012 is coming to pass a miracle is coming for a gentleman by the name musa musa a gentleman by the name musa the lord is bringing a miracle for him right now God is healing a lady of appendicitis. Appendicitis, that's what, that's what it is. You don't know, but you've been having severe pain. Severe pain is appendicitis. And the Lord is bringing a miracle right now. There is a man here, you've been trusting God for promotion. This is five years. Five years. The Lord says in the next three months, your letter will arrive. In the next three months and you will testify. Pay attention to the prophetic words. There is grace to make them come to pass. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
Please be seated if you can. Just leave those under the anointing. Just sit if you can. God is doing strange things tonight. There are three ladies. This will come upon supernatural laughter in a very strange way. They can't control it. I will worship you forever. Love you forever. This God is too. Don't just bring people out like that, please. This is a prophetic experience. They'll never be able to stop the laughter. It's not, it's not about what they want to do. It's a, it's a message. I will worship you forever. Love you forever. Because I prophesy to all three of you. Let your family step into a season of laughter right now. I release that anointing even as you are laughing. I release it in the name of Jesus. There is authority in your laughter. I declare by that authority. In the name that is above all names. In the name that is above all names. The Lord is bringing miracles to people. Glorify yourself, O God. In the name of Jesus. Listen. We do business in this kingdom on the strength of mysteries mysteries are secret codes of operation he said the secrets of the lord are with them that fear him and he will show them his covenants there is a way to make things happen in the spirit madam the witchcraft in your family dies forever it leaves your family right now I command that spirit you take your hands of her life in the name of Jesus Christ James 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 you are a visitor who is that is there someone like that James there's someone called James he's a visitor this is your first time of coming. Run. The Lord wants to use you and bring a miracle to your family. But look at me. God needs to save you. Huh? There are many things wrong with your life. Many things. Huh? You are a bad boy. God is going to change your entire life. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not insulting you, but there will be a miracle for you right now because the hand of God is upon your life, but there is a spirit that is destroying you. A spirit that is destroying you. I cast that spirit right now. Let it live your life forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, you can use anybody and anything. You brought James out name of Jesus. Let me talk to one more lady. Helene. I'm hearing a name. Helene. Is there someone with that name? Helene. Come. Who came with you? Came alone. You came alone. But why am I seeing a man standing near you? Listen. There is a spirit tormenting you. Let her go now. I curse you by the God of heaven. In the name of Jesus. This has stopped her life. Tied everything. I'm seeing everything under chains. There is a man standing. And this man is shouting and saying he's married to you. I curse you by the God of heaven. Hold my hands name of Jesus that spirit lives your life forever I bring you complete deliverance in the name of Jesus are you married that's it for your marriage this is the reason why you're not married. are you hearing what I'm saying 
because this has been your prayer this has been your desire anything you start and i need to pray for you because your stomach is swelling it's even embarrassing you you are thinking it's because you are eating too much if i don't pray for you they will tell you something like fibroid is growing and we have to pray we cause it it dies a natural death and goes back there that person that comes to oppress you in your dream never returns to you again forever in the name of jesus and may doors open for you strangely in the name of jesus christ our time is gone um, there are three things three keys three mysteries that can invoke the manifested presence of God the manifest presence of God in the life of a man in a ministry I wanted to start a series on throne room encounters but the Lord asked me to talk about this number one is obedience we are going to be fast because I want us to pray God still wants to visit people my sister come this lady um, where the usher is standing that gentleman right one two three just your rope the third lady come no not you the lady at your back come yes she's the one you come please please save our time um, the lord says i should prophesy to you that the rejected stone becomes the chief cornerstone the rejected stone becomes the chief cornerstone you may look at yourself and think you are nobody you may look at yourself and think you are a weak person this is what has been destroying you you compare yourself with people you have been crying simply because you are not doing well you are not doing well in anything and then people have been insulting you and this has made you to feel so bad while you were sitting there the lord opened my eyes and i saw a lot of misery you see the lady crying you see let me tell you there are all kinds of people seated in this place tonight when you see people just sitting you may not know what is destroying them eating them up because the destiny that i see is far different from what i see right now this is already putting a lot of pressure you love god but you know this sense of inferiority is killing you and eating you up the lord is saying i should tell you the rejected stone will later become the chief cornerstone lord jesus i pray for this dear lady there is nobody you cannot change there is nobody you cannot touch may the god that i serve visit you may he give you a new beginning i cut you away from bad friends and bad influences that make you try to do things to belong no leave them this night don't have anything to do with them in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ madam madam you are asking the lord to talk to me that i should minister to you i'm hearing your prayer come you are praying and your prayer is coming to my ears you are bowing your head and you are saying oh god please let this man talk to me what is the relationship between you and the woman sitting close to you she's my elder sister do i know come because i'm seeing that the miracle is not just for you alone but god is doing something for the family please stand up now. kai this woman has suffered seriously i look at this woman i'm seeing pains you are a very kind woman but what is this thing that makes you in trouble all sorts of trouble where is your husband what's he doing madam god needs to visit three things that's what the lord is showing me number one is your finances things are dying in your family that thing your husband is doing before he collects his salary he's already owing there is serious trouble you have cried about this thing it's even causing trouble for you people at home right yes, now sir. Is that true yes your husband is in in fact sometimes he looks as if you know you have to look at yourself and say am i irritating this man yes. because of the way he's behaving you are even yes. suspecting that maybe he's having an affair with somebody yes, else sir. the 
Lord is ending this confusion for you because you are a kind woman. There is a spirit responsible for your tragedy. This woman is a very kind woman, but I'm seeing bad luck everywhere you go. That's what I'm seeing. There's nothing you do that works. See, let me tell you, the power of God. Look at this family crying. You know, sometimes people think we just do these things because we are emotional and we are wasting time. Did you know there are people, as they are sitting down there, that's their last opportunity. They are saying, they will now go to a prophet or somebody and he will tell them, bring 100,000. Bring 200,000. Remove your clothes. Let me bath you. Let me do this. And then after that one, you add all kinds of things. Because I'm looking at this woman and I'm seeing a lot of struggle. The same spirit causing you pain is what wants to destroy her life and destroy what is supposed to be an, a source of joy for her marriage. Huh? We have to pray. Did you come alone? They are crying. I think we are official assignment. Yesterday she told me about your story. I supposed to go back to Abuja. Yeah, my son. I have changed three universities for my son. It's a drug addict. My first son, twenty-three years. A drug addict. Where is he? He's in Abuja. Suleiman. It's not just that this boy is a drug addict. Ah, I don't like what I'm seeing, no. Because they want to convert this boy. That's what I'm seeing. This is, this is not a nice thing. We're going to pray. Truly, this woman has suffered. But things are going to change. Your husband needs a miracle. A big miracle. Do you know this woman is so kind? She's not even concerned about herself she would rather not have clothes than for her children this is the kind of woman i'm seeing in the spirit i sold my car to pay school fees i sold my car to pay my sons can you work on this technical or shadrach are you doing something wrong i sold my car to pay my son's school your fees. car to pay whose school fees my son's school fees the boy that is oh yes. look at this where is he see let me tell you may god make this never be your testimony you don't know what it means the child you are waiting for trusting that god will use him to wipe your tears and the devil just hijacks his destiny now no car and the son is not even serious i need to pray for you because you have not slept very well in days madam i'm looking at your sister and i'm seeing that you have not slept I'm hearing you people saying what what is wrong with our family especially the girls the ladies in your family that's what you you are the one who is saying that thing you are telling her i'm seeing you people in a discussion and you you are telling her what is wrong with our family all the ladies they are virtuous they love god but nothing good comes out of it and there are families like this seated looking at me is that true madam Yes, sir. Because I'm hearing a conversation and she's asking you. We are saying, seven, seven ladies, seven How women. many of you? Seven of us. How, who is doing well among you? Nobody. Nobody. You see what I'm saying? Seven ladies. Nobody is doing well. And all of them are serious and nice, virtuous ladies. They either get married to foolish men yes. or get married to all kinds of things. Yes, sir. Where is number four? Who is number four among them? It's our mother. Huh? her mother there is a miracle that god wants to give her because the lord said that she's number four in the order is visiting her my dear please calm down what happened to your mother in her marriage the devil wants to bring it to happen to you we are going to destroy it. their father is not with her mother that's what i'm saying we are going to destroy it because this one so i will worship him forever love him forever because this God is too good. I will worship Him forever, love Him forever. Because this God is too good.
bring that lady who shouted there is a miracle god wants to give her family is it okay if i just continue ministering please i know i'm supposed to share something but the the thing god is doing now god wants to talk to people let's let's just let him solve serious problems here your time for breakthrough stand up you come i came all the way an angel of the lord was walking and said i should follow him and he brought me to your place come it's time for god to wipe your tears you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor i just want to say thank you Thank you. you get the glory. You get the glory. Hallelujah. We don't kill, but I'm seeing someone's uncle dying. I'm seeing that man in a shrine concocting something and saying all the ladies would not marry. But I'm seeing like thunder striking him. That's what the Lord is should help that lady right now. I'm seeing it happen. I announce our victory if I be a servant of the Lord right now. May the earth open and swallow them. I speak it by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Any man sitting on what belongs to you, any man sitting on your glory, Jimmy, God is bringing a miracle for your sister. I'm seeing your sister I'm seeing your face and I'm seeing her still flash is she here who is come I didn't even know that she's here I'm seeing the Lord is saying he's bringing a miracle for her I'm seeing somebody clean footprints on the ground that's what I'm seeing you are moving and you are leaving footprints and the footprints i see flies all around it but i'm seeing someone cleaning cleaning it and the lord is saying i should tell you remember not the former things nor consider the things of old he says i should tell you behold i will do a new thing god will begin a strange walk in your life and it's going to surprise you a strange walk you have a desire for god you sincerely love god and let me tell you the desire is not a waste the same way your brother is loving god and being passionate look at me it's not about perfection it's about sincerity of motive the, the journey to self-perfection is unnecessary and exhausting what god requires is a sincere desire for me let me pray for you father in the name of jesus christ the anointing that will wipe the past of this lady's life the past that eats you i curse it by the god of heaven in the name of jesus may your conscience be purged by the blood May the water of the word cleanse you and may grace be supplied unto you for a new dimension, for a new level. I release this grace upon you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's go to Exodus 40, 33, please. Exodus 40, 33. We really have to be fast. <sighs> Exodus 40, 33. Moses wanted to once again experience the manifested presence of God. But he could not see that presence find expression until his obedience was perfected, complete. Let me tell you something. Half obedience is not obedience at all. Half obedience. You must obey to the latter. God is very meticulous about his instructions. Are we together now? And so God kept watching as they attempted building it. And then 40 verse 33 it says and he reared up the court round about the tabernacle and the altar and set up for the hanging of the court gate right read the last sentence if you have open there it says so Moses finished the work he finished building according to pattern obeyed as instructed to the latter and something happened in the next verse 34 
He says, Then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. The word glory is the Hebrew word kabod, the essence, the fullness, the expression of all that makes a man what he is, or whatever deity. So when we say the glory of God, the effulgence of his person, right? Fill the temple, 35. And Moses was not able to enter the tent of congregation because the cloud abode thereon and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. When you are obedient, you will see the glory of the Lord in your life in most remarkable ways. You don't have to be a pastor to see the glory of God. You don't have to be a man of God. Once you are kingdom compliant, the sacrifice of complying with the principles of the kingdom, then you are authorized to experience the glory. You see, you may not be able to see all of the clouds and all of that, but the glory of God is made manifest in miracles, strange testimonies, dramatic operations of the hands of God that leaves you baffled. Everyone who sees you knows that this is by the finger of God. That's somebody's testimony tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to obey. Grace to obey. You must cry for it. Complete obedience gives you access. Access to experiencing the glory. Number two. The second key to experiencing the manifestation of God's glory. Is prayer. Prayer. Matthew chapter 7. 17. Matthew 17. Verse 1 to 8, Matthew 17. Matthew 17. Verse 1 to 8. This was the encounter that we call the transfiguration of Jesus. We apologize for the inability of the media to switch for now. Please. Just bear with us. I'm sure they are working on it. And after six days, listen. Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain privately. There are certain things in the kingdom that are not just for Christians. Listen. I know we have this idea that yes, God doesn't want to hide anything from us. But you see, the dispensation of spiritual realities is according to the degree to which the Spirit of God can trust you. There are certain trust levels if you have not attained. Certain deep mysteries of the kingdom cannot be committed to you. The Bible says that he was the one who called all the disciples, but he took three. And he says, there is something I want to show you privately. What did he show them privately? A mystery. The Bible says, and was transfigured before them. Listen. He went to the place of prayer and that transfiguration began. And the Bible says, his face did shine like the sun and his raiment was as white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Listen, verse 4. He says, then, then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make this and that and that and that, you know. And then he was just speaking and so on and so forth. And then the Bible says, verse 5, While he yet spoke, Jesus was communicating with them in the place of prayer. And he was trying to make an arrangement. And the Bible says, Behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And then behold, a voice spoke out of the cloud and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased hear ye him verse 6 he says and when the disciples heard it they fell on their face and they were much terrified he says and Jesus came and touched them and said arise and be not afraid and when they had lifted up their eyes they saw no man except Jesus only listen there is a dimension of the glory of God you will never experience until the ministry of prayer brings you there. 
you can do every bible study you know to do you can read every concordance takes and so on and so forth there is a decree of open heavens the manifestation of the glory of god upon a man's life that is a direct answer to the ministry of prayer are we together now he spake a parable luke 18 verse 1 unto them to the end that men ought always to pray and not to say it he spake a parable B by prayer i don't just mean oh god give me tea give me bread that's just, that's petition 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 give me tea give me bread that's petition hallelujah the kind of prayer i'm talking about is the type that is said in the book of james it's sexual fervent prayer of the righteous man you see let me tell you there is nothing in your life that can substitute for the absence of a healthy life of prayer no matter your word level it would show when a man does not have an altar that is alive an altar of prayer the first thing that disappears is discernment discernment is lack of discernment is spiritual blindness what lack of discernment is to the realm of the spirit that's what blindness is in the physical realm the moment a man is close to the impulses of the activities of the spirit there is no effect so things happen around our lives and we we become victims we become um, um, victims of the effects of things that happen not the initiators of the faith the minister of prayer it was on the strength of prayer that when satan spoke to peter jesus looked at him and said get thee behind me satan and he said, Peter, Satan desired by discernment. He desired to sift you like wheat. He said, but I have what? What was the antidote? Prayed for you, not discussed with him. I prayed for you, Peter. Something is wrong with your discernment. You didn't even know when the Holy Ghost was speaking to you. You just said, I am the Christ. And the Spirit took over your voice. You didn't even know the difference. He said, I prayed for you. Because that's what is wrong sense of a healthy altar of prayer it has numbed your discerning ability there are many believers here and it's sad if you are a leader here and you are a pastor believe me if you don't pray you will your discernment will be dark and blocked one of the greatest advantage of walking in the spirit is access to feeling the impulses of the environment of the spirit the realm of the spirit is a real realm like the physical realm right when you get born again and you are filled with the holy ghost as you begin to pray the first thing that happens to you is an activation of the ability to interact with the atmosphere of the spirit it may start in dreams it may start in visions it could be dramatic but then your spirit listen to my message spiritual perception your impulses of the spirit right they be, you begin to pick signals there is danger uh -uh. God does not want me to go here. He doesn't have to give you a reason. Lack of prayer has brought a lot of catastrophe. Not all these things will just stroll around. 30 minutes, one hour, you just throw back. It's called the effectual fervent. You don't have time to fervent. You add passion to it. And as far as your passion can drive you, that's the validity of the prayer time. It's not about saying, I'll pray for 10 minutes or five hours or eight hours you will pray until the nothing of the spirit releases you you are praying to burn things in the spirit not for the formality of religion the problem with the prayer ministry is that most people pray to feel spiritual and then maybe to intimidate themselves their little group so if i pray for 30 minutes you add 30 minutes to it and it makes you look spiritual no when you are a spiritual man there is always an object that drives you to the prayer part time and as you pray you keep checking the rewards of your victory as against the impulse and stop only when that victory is established this is where we miss it when elijah prayed was it just according to desire he wanted an effect first time he prayed only god knows how long that was he said go and check there was no result what did he do again 
we stop we stop because it's two hours we use earthly time to gauge certain things you see the 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 things we are contending against sometimes will require time and certain dynamics of spiritual operation to produce victory so if you have this idea that because you are you want to pray you just sense god wants to speak to you and then you pray for 30 minutes or one hour and you feel i am okay you see you are using a wrong timing the same way if you pray for eight hours just blindly and religiously and think because you pray for eight hours it means you are making contact with the spirit no sir you pray according to the guidance of the spirit the spirit of god instructs you he navigates you your prayer there is a connection between a burden in the spirit and something in the realm of the spirit and you pray until there is a release when the servant came and said i've seen the sign elijah stopped at once he didn't say let me just continue since i've gone so far he stopped at once because prayer has a purpose once the purpose is achieved stop and move on in action brothers and sisters hear me especially for those who are workers those who are students those who are maybe business people and so on and so forth the the propensity for negligence in the place of prayer is very high are we together as a student you have lecture in the morning sometimes marathon lectures you are finishing in the evening you may have fellowship or you have certain things the truth is when you calculate it you find out that there's no time for quality prayer are we together now you see the most important thing about prayer it's not necessarily praying eight, eight hours every day. At your level, you cannot pray eight hours every day. You'll be irresponsible in your activity. The key is to maintain the fire and set periodic times when you compensate for the absence of the secret place. At least I expect everybody once a week you should be able to have some time when you can dedicate certain things. And let me tell you, in my life, one of the biggest secrets of my prayer life is the mystery of night prayers i can tell you this as any man that prays the night time is when men, men gain grounds in the spirit why do you think people die in the night when they sleep why do you think people sicknesses and diseases amplify in the night there are many mysteries we don't know in the body of maximize your night time especially for many of us here because we are young establish things in the night don't crash into trouble and then you are wondering what to do in the day the daytime is for manifestation we settle realities in the night believe me it will not rob you of sleep it's just a little sacrifice of prayer that will bring you tremendous power I hear God clearly at night. There are times I go outside and I just sit down. Everyone has slept. I just sit down outside and I'm meditating. Many of us have been cheated in the night time. The devil has studied your spiritual life and he has seen your area of vulnerability. Let me tell you something. Do you know there is something called slumber? I hope you know it's a spirit. Uncontrolled passion for sleep. You are passionate about sleep. I'm not just talking of resting. You know, you are tired and you are resting. Some of us is a spirit. No matter how you plan to pray, once it's night, even if you sleep from morning till that time, you are just going to thank the Lord. Lord, I bless you and snore your way to the morning. It's a spirit. If no one has told you, something is wrong with your destiny. Many politicians and businessmen, their time of meeting is in the night. Witches and wizards and demons that do all kinds of things. You take advantage of the mysteries in the spirit. There are times and seasons that grant you access by grace. You see, if you do not know these things, if you do not know these things, you will, you will miss out on a lot of things. Why is it called the Lord's Supper? Not the Lord's breakfast. Not the Lord's lunch. Why was it done in the night? Because there was no time? No. Was a mystery. I pray for every dead prayer life here or every prayer life that is need driven 
father i'm coming before you now the other time you gave me five thousand listen if you really want to be strong and gain power and open the heavens your prayer must be effectual the key to effectual prayer is praying in tongues there is a place for praying in your understanding but i'm telling you if you want to make an effect pray in the spirit for no man knows what is in the heart of a man said the spirit that is in that man so no man knows what is in the heart of god you don't just go around grumbling just praying sing one or two choruses which is good the key to prayer i'm telling you effectual prayer that builds you is praying in tongues spend time praying in tongues not just in english or in your language no there is a place for that pray in the spirit and please if you are here and you have not received the baptism of the holy spirit correctly and seriously i want you to know that there is something you are missing now i know i don't want to go into all the details our time is gone we come from different churches different ministries i know we have different ideas my goal of teaching this tonight is not to create controversy but i love you too much not to tell you the truth if you are not filled with the holy spirit i don't know what you have been taught about it we have teachings already there you can listen to it this is there is a need for you to say lord i need to upgrade it's not just about praying blah, 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 making noise no this is a spiritual language the bible calls it an instrument that helps our infirmities what is our infirmity the bible says we do not know what to pray for as we ought to but the spirit makes intercession are we together don't say i just love the lord i'm, I'm okay I'm, I'm fine honestly i don't want to complicate my spiritual life it's already complicated this world we live is very complicated the ministry of prayer is what will straighten that crooked path he said elijah was a man of like passion like us he said he prayed earnestly that there would be no rain for a space of three and a half years elijah locked the heavens and put the key in his pocket he said the heavens will not be open except at my word not the word of any man of god that is serious these are men who took territories they 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 taught the heavens open one time he was up the mountain some enemies came you see that a man of prayer let me tell you if you're a man of prayer and any man goes to any shrine to concoct nonsense oh come on ask the prophets of Baal what happened to them the Bible says they kept calling on Baal for money Elijah said maybe he's sleeping wake him you know why many Christians are weak in the body of Christ we love comfort to a fault and and we men of God are the ones who have destroyed people I believe in prosperity you know that I believe in the blessings of God but brothers and sisters let me tell you there is the sacrifice you must make for your destiny the sacrifice of prayer it's not all about having cities there are giants on every mountain are you hearing what I'm telling you there are giants on every mountain you are a pastor you are not praying you just share a revelation and you are happy you believe you come on stage no prayer no periodic fasting no strength you just want to speak and let things happen do you think god is a herbalist no god is not a herbalist please if you're a pastor here pay attention to what i'm telling you except you want to joke around with your members or you are ready for empty pews the generation we are in now members are not ready to waste their time for nonsense again once they come and sit down and you are wasting their time they will get up and they will leave no matter how you pray pour one gallon of oil on your head we need power it takes prayer to access open heavens are we together we add drama in churches for two hours and then when he's about to pray they say everybody bow your head as if we are mourning somebody just recites a prayer request for 10 minutes say okay thank you jesus for answering prayer and people get up and that's why we keep getting weaker and weaker no discernment spiritual things are flying around your territory nobody has the eyes to see and the ears to hear until it happens and everybody is confused may that be, not be your testimony in the name of jesus christ three enemies of prayer number one excess food excess food there is a name for it is called gluttony. 
believe me if you take what i'm telling you your prayer life will step into another dimension am i saying you should not eat no not at all excess food gluttony there is a connection between food and the flesh number two excess sleep excess sleep the second enemy of prayer excess sleep number three the third enemy of prayer worry 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 is a spirit that's why the first assignment of worry is to bring you to a point of depression have you seen people with worry i don't mean people who are just thinking real worry they can't even talk uh -uh. are you doing well they just keep quiet because satan's goal is to shut your mouth he knows that there is power that is released if you open your mouth he says my heart is indicting a good matter yea i speak of excellent things he said my tongue is the pen of a ready writer psalms 45 1 and 2 my tongue is the pen of a ready writer men ought always to pray brothers and sisters pray turn and tell your neighbor pray say pray again say pray again say pray in the night yeah pray in the night you will you will command tremendous power there were times in zaria most of the people here will tell you night time was the time people build strength ah come on you would see all kinds of strategies of prayer strategies but well, god is helping us i'm just i'm just challenging you brothers and sisters please hear me if you are married husband and wife pray a praying husband and wife is a staying husband and wife a lazy husband and wife is a divorced family already it's a matter of time because every spirit the devil will move across families and he will come like the angel of death pass through every city but when he got to Goshen he came he saw that he saw that there was a fortification what fortification have you put around your life John chapter 1 when Satan went before God what happened he met a man who made oblations for his children it was a similitude of prayer and Satan said I came but I could not access him have you not built an hedge around him satan is a prayerless christian is a powerless christian beauty and glory of god comes upon your life when you pray don't put prayer as an instrument of crashing this is the problem some of us pray but the entire scope of our prayer is god give me are you not seeing give me and we try to manipulate god and bend his hand that's why he gave you the blessings of praying in the spirit pray in the spirit stretch in the spirit you can put worship songs your earphone or something to create the atmosphere pray in the spirit even if you cannot pray in the night early hours of the morning why not put a little worship song charge your spirit sing one or two songs blast every mountain before you in tongues and walk out in the day and you become a living miracle you are walking with the heavens open and what looks miraculous for others becomes your atmosphere men will sit down and plot evil you will walk on it as if satan does not exist ah, those are the people who will not be affected by the arrows that fly by day not the noisome pestilence there are people who will be affected you are a christian but you will still be affected but there are those who are immune i pity the native doctor that calls my name in any charm it's not just that it, if all that happens is that it does not work i'm still cheated for calling my name that charm and the native doctor was born to ashes when elijah finished proving his point he said no 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 no. if we stop here that's not all go and meet those prophets kill every one of them as a testament that you don't try god the devil has mocked some of our lives and we're just watching running for counseling and discussing some of you this night you will lock your door and say i'm offering my phone lord it must change families don't pray they discuss they call people to come and gossip but they never pray we meet people for counseling 
we go and meet babalao we go and meet all kinds of people but we never pray we pray as a last resort oh god i come to you you too you have seen what we have done we have made all of our efforts whereas we should come before god there was a king in the bible who died because he didn't seek god it was a taboo to seek other things when you have problems we depend on uncles if i talk to my uncle he will do this let me tell you never take action on anything until you have prayed about it especially major decisions in your life no matter how convinced you are pray because there is a way that cement right unto a man but the bible says the end thereof i can't tell you how many things i wanted to do plans i had physically speaking they look fabulous but when i went to the place of prayer there are many things we wanted to do as a ministry i would discuss in our leaders meeting oh we are going to do a and b i will go back to god it is silent i come back they know already the moment i say we'll do a thing and i'm silent about it they know god does do you have the courage to keep quiet if god is silent do you have the courage to stand still if god is not moving if the cloud did not move they did not move if it stood still stand still the true benefit of prayer not this thing people do just for spirituality just to show that i'm a man of prayer people bend and deceive themselves to show they are praying that's not a sign of prayer that's nonsense those are the kinds of things that make god look like an idiot prayer is serious business and it commands victory say i receive grace to pray say it again i receive grace to pray grace to pray take charge of your atmosphere there are giants on every mountain if they didn't spare jesus they will not spare you i guarantee you make no mistakes do not think they will not come for your business or your family or your children you have the testimony of our dear mother do not think they would they would the devil will attack anything that can be attacked if it does not happen it's coming i guarantee you in the name of the lord the bible says after the temptation he left jesus for a season for a season he came through peter jesus detected him he said ah you caught me the next time he came through judas the son of perdition jesus allowed it to be so that scriptures will be fulfilled not because he was not ready to overcome oh speak from the heavens and the earth will hear oh speak from your throne and i'll hear from the earth my altar is calling you oh god my prayer is calling you oh god oh speak from the heavens and i'll hear you from the world oh speak from your throne and i'll hear from the earth for my altar is calling you oh god my secret place is calling you oh god take my place have an altar that calls him do you have a secret place that calls him when there are men who seek your flesh and they are invoking upon altars is there an altar that answers or are you just loitering around hoping that life will work men have died because they did not have altars let me tell you please play no games i'm not scaring you lady don't think you will just get married because you are beautiful take back your priestly robe tonight and go back to the place of prayer there is an effectual fervent prayer there are many brothers you will not just be established because you are a graduate there are giants on every mountain a man can look at you with his saddest spirit and vow that you will not move forward it takes prayer to move mountains by the grace of god this ministry is moving as if the devil does not exist it's not because the devil does not want to destroy this ministry there is a mystery there are there are mysteries like cornerstones that we have found 
and put around the boundaries of this ministry. Number three. The third key to carrying and releasing the glory and the manifest presence of God is worship. The last scripture and then we'll continue next week during the miracle service. Second Chronicles chapter 5. We'll read verse 13 and 14. Just two verses. Very interesting. This was the dedication of the temple. When Solomon had built the temple, there was a sacrifice upon the altar and he was about to dedicate the temple. Hallelujah. Second Chronicles. 13 and 14. It came to pass, listen, as the trumpeters and singers were what? As one, making one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord and when they lifted up their voice with trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord saying for he is good for his mercy endured forever that what? then the house was filled with the, the cloud filled the whole house right? the next verse so that the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud for the glory of the Lord had filled the house listen in 2005 I conducted a personal research Jewish worship and the mystery of God's presence I was obsessed I wanted to know what the secret was how will a man just step into a place and the atmosphere just changes physically as if he carries a dimension of glory I wanted to find out because I saw this happen in the lives of the Jews I saw this happen to people who were associated to the Jews like Benihim and so on and so forth they would just sing and worship and before you know it the glory will fill the place so oh, I wish we had time we'll take it from here next week but brothers and sisters worship is a mystery that compels the presence of God to be made manifest worship is a mystery the third key to activating the manifested presence of God here and now in a place worship it's not enough to just be obedient as powerful as prayer is there is a dimension many of us are missing in our spiritual life worship the Bible says in Psalm 100 it says that we enter his gates with thanksgiving then he says and his courts with praise he said come before him with singing the protocol to meeting him is song singing come before him it has nothing to do with the quality of your voice it has nothing to do with your music proficiency although that's an added advantage however you cannot give an excuse that because I cannot sing I cannot raise songs and incense of worship unto God next week I'm going to be teaching us the protocol of acceptable worship not every kind of worship is acceptable the proof that your worship is acceptable is that his glory responds to it I'll share with us the mystery of Cain and Abel a type of the man of the spirit and the man of the flesh the Bible says both of them they came and they offered sacrifices of worship right and Abel gave of his firstlings and his fatlings and Cain just gave up the vegetables and all of that and then the Bible says how that the sacrifice of Abel rose up to the heavens and that of Cain did not rise up and Cain killed Abel when God met Cain he said where is you know where is Abel he said am I my brother's keeper and then he began to challenge him and he said that if he did what was right, paraphrasing, would his sacrifice not be accepted? Sacrifice of worship is not just about singing. There is a protocol that leads to acceptable worship. The first key to acceptable worship is found in Romans chapter 12. From verse 1. I beseech thee, brethren, by the message of God, that ye offer your bodies 
that's the first key that he offer your bodies not your songs not your voice not your offering not your oblations not the lifting up of your hands like the morning sacrifice above and beyond that there is a protocol there is a system that must precede your songs he says your body must become a prototype of what you want to offer with your lips and then Hebrews 13 gives us a picture of the fact that worship and praise is sacrificial so the first is there must be death we explain that the second is that it must be a sacrifice it says let us offer unto God the sacrifice of praise which are the calves of our lips he calls your sacrifice the calf of your lips in the similitude of that which was done in ancient times in the temple he says when you worship God it is in the similitude of the killing of bulls and rams he says offer the calves of your lips a sacrifice that is acceptable unto him hallelujah that's why we took our time to worship and as we began to worship God began to respond and touch people the spirit of prophecy came upon us and we began to minister three short things that I've given you tonight that control the manifestation of God's glory you can't argue it they are not they are not they are not opinions they are the spiritual formula for accessing the glory of God number one obedience number two a, a consistent life of effectual prayer hallelujah number three the incense of worship oh let my praise rise before you the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice these are all mysteries the mystery of the lifting up of hands the mystery of repetition as you sing you see a lot of people sing it the Jews used to sing songs one line they would sing it for hours just like you see many people in many religions it's, it's not an enchantment there is something they do the mystery of repetition you see that happen in the songs that the psalmist wrote their response will be for Thank you. Praise the Lord. For he is good and his mercies endure forever. Or for his mercies shall endure ever faithful, ever sure. And so he will say a lot of things and then they will keep responding. Listen, they didn't write songs as musicians. They wrote songs as spiritual men. They didn't have that skill to compose songs. It was as it was delivered to them. It was delivered in a particular way that if they sang it, it will make God respond in a particular way. For instance, that formula, you are good and your mercy endures forever. You know, I've studied it. I found out that every time the nation of Israel wanted deliverance, that was the song they sang. It had to be that line. They invoked the goodness and the mercy of God. Two things that we quote every Sunday, they are following us and we never see it because we don't believe them the goodness of God and the mercy of God it was the goodness of God that passed before Moses I will let my goodness a dimension of my glory called my goodness pass and then his mercy he says for it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed hallelujah we're going to rise and pray just for a few minutes and say, Lord, I want to see your glory in my life. I'm tired of just being a Christian, coming to church. I want to begin to walk in the glory of God. Lift your hands and begin to pray. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and pray. Father, I desire to see the glory, the manifest presence of God in my life. Can you pray? Please go ahead. Kanonya, are you praying? I desire to see your glory in my life. 
Lord, I'm tired of a barren Christian life. I receive that grace. Supernatural grace. Supernatural grace. Supernatural grace. I want to see your glory revealed in my life. Let the eyes of the blind be opened through my hands. Let the cares of the deaf be unstopped. Let my life represent breakthroughs, signs, wonders, miracles. Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. Grace for unusual obedience. Lift your voice and pray. Grace. 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 Grace for unusual obedience. Those outside, make sure you are praying. Grace for unusual obedience. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number two, please I'd like you to pray. If your prayer life is dead on its way to death, don't feel condemned, don't feel embarrassed, but I'd like you to pray. And say, Lord, bring it back alive. My prayer life. At every level you can move higher. Lift your voice and pray. The fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous are much. Make sure you are praying. Lord, I'm tired of lack of discernment in my life. I'm tired of acting carnally. I'm tired of acting just by my sensory impulses. I pray my way to divine secrets. I pray my way to divine strategies. I pray my way to divine secrets. I pray my way to divine secrets. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's add one more prayer under the area of prayer. You are going to pray. Many of us see things and hear things, but there is no grace, access to understanding. So there are so many things God is showing us, but we are deaf of understanding. So we do not have the grace to interpret or to interpret correctly. Lift your voice and cry. Say grace to understand. He said, understand it, what thou readest. It's one thing to see. It's one thing to have a dream. It's one thing to hear God speak. But it's another thing to understand. The working knowledge of the revelations you have received. You need it for your marriage. You need it for your ministry. You need it for your job. You need it to know where God wants you to be. Part time. Understanding. Understanding. Lord, I'll not just have dreams. I receive understanding. I'll not just hear your voice. I receive interpretations. Accurate, unemotional interpretations of spiritual reality. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Last prayer point. Lord, teach me the art of worship. Worship in a way that can bring your presence to abide and remain in my life. Lift your voice. Give me songs from heaven. Give me songs in the night. Melodies of the spirit. Let me hear the songs of angels. Let me hear the sound of the spirit the songs for every season the song to sing my way into the glory to sing my way into breakthrough to sing my way into healings and miracles to sing my way into prophecy to sing the songs of the spirit hallelujah hallelujah next week i'll teach you briefly before i begin to minister during the miracle service listen
pay attention to the songs that God brings in your life seasonally. There are times the spirit is the one who recommends the song you will use in your worship. Stay there. Don't be rebellious. Those songs have authority upon them to bring a dimension of breakthrough. In the last maybe three months, the Lord speaks to me through songs. I have, I have gotten so many songs. Are we together now? Pay attention. Music is one of the languages in the spirit. You must pay attention to the impulses, the sounds. Sometimes it could just be the line of a song. You are glorious, so glorious in your way. That's what lands upon your spirit. Don't just guess your song and say the song is not in my tribe. No, there is authority in that song. It's like a sword, it's an instrument of warfare. You keep singing it, sometimes for hours. Are we together now? Yeah. That's how I get it. Let me tell you, I can give you testimonies of personal breakthroughs in my life. As a result of certain songs. So glorious in your way. No other song will do. You just keep singing it. You get up in the morning and that's the only song you hear. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. That may be a song in your spirit. You may just receive it. God is telling you, I'm coming through for you. But you see, the problem is, many of us do not know. You are supposed to take it. Don't stop singing it. That's your instrument. That's a pass in the spirit. But we drop it and then raise all kinds of choruses in our languages. And we are just singing and dancing. And God is saying, no, there is acceptable worship. Are we together? There are times you see us in Koinonia here. Two weeks, three weeks. When I come up stage or the worship team, we keep repeating certain songs. There is authority upon the songs. We stretch them until the grace that they came with from heaven is delivered unto the people. Then the songs will rest. Pay attention to songs. Everyone can receive songs, whether you're a musician or not. It's a product of alignment, not just musical accuracy. You can edit it, but you can receive a song. Hold on to it and sing your way to an ending breakthrough it was the playing of the string that casted out demons right from david there was a sound that the spirits heard he said there is as it were many voices and none of them is without effect your worship is an incense it's a language that calls the presence of god lift your hands and let me pray for you In the name that is above all names, let everyone represented here begin to walk in dramatic signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus Christ, the barrenness in your Christian life that makes your revelations mock you because there is no grace for performance, I command it to come to an end right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, that for every dimension of spiritual reality you communicate there will be grace to demonstrate its validity here and now in the name of jesus christ i pray for you everywhere you have tried to activate the operation of the word and have not gotten results go back now and see the strength of the almighty god upon your life in the name of jesus christ where you laid hands on the sick and nothing seemed to happen i empower your hands you go back and you will watch dramatic miracles in the name of jesus hear me the supernatural dimension in your life must be clearly made manifest for the world to listen to you they are not waiting for the explanation of the sons of god they are tired of noise there must be something supernatural you must desire the operation of the spirit to be activated in your life you must covet earnestly and desire that lord my life will become a host to your glory that it will be a privilege for people to receive me because they know as they receive me they give space for the glory they will bless you someone sows into your life and gets a, a million fold return do you think you will sow again yes because he's sowing in the glory you pray for somebody and ripple effects of unending testimony it will motivate you 
but if the only thing that consoles you spiritually is that maybe you are understanding bible or you are going to heaven your spiritual life is barren hallelujah may you begin to command undeniable results i pray for you everybody connected to this ministry and all those listening online the thousands of people we have all across the world i minister to you by the anointing of the spirit may you begin to be commanders of miracles strange results in the name of the lord jesus christ i pray for you whatever you lay your hands on i don't know what you are trusting god for but i'm praying that between now and next friday some of you before friday your requests will be answered in the name of jesus christ please believe me when i pray for you i say it again there are many of you between now between now and friday the testimony you are waiting for you have prayed you have fasted i don't know how to call but may the god i serve make it happen for you in the name of jesus christ lift your hands and give him glory please keep standing we're almost done by the grace of god next week is our miracle service please listen now i want to see how by his grace we'll have an extensive time to really really minister to the needs of people sometimes we come we're constrained with time i want to see how we can really minister to people please invite all your friends and your loved ones it's going to be fire in this place on friday praise the lord hallelujah it's going to be fire write your request everything that has made you cry bring it before the god of heaven let's flog it out here on friday and the devil must bow he must give you to your life and please make sure that your loved ones those who cannot come please come with something as a point of contact for them hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah if you're worshiping with us for the first time wherever you are while standing please i like you to make your way to the front we want to bless you this is koinonia inside and outside first time worshipers god bless you honor them koinonia please keep standing everyone we'll be out of here in a few minutes thank you thank you for coming can we honor them can we celebrate them there are a number of them coming from outside thank you hallelujah hallelujah wow can you keep clapping may god bless all of you who brought them may god bless all of you who traveled from so far you will never be the same never be the same in the name of jesus hallelujah praise the lord thank you so much um gentlemen and ladies for coming this is koinonia we are here every friday it's a meeting put together by Trinity Network International. We thank you for coming. I have one guarantee that your life will never be the same. I assure you, your life will never be the same. You will go back and you'll be amazed to see the changes in your life. Remarkable manifestations of the Spirit. Especially for those of you who traveled from far. Some of you are pastors. Some of you are leaders. Some of you just love the Lord. You came. Others were invited. May the Lord bless you. We are here every Friday. Next week Friday is our miracle service. You can come prepared. Invite your friends and loved ones. 5.30 we are here. The Lord is going to be doing great and awesome things. We love you and we thank you. There is a grace upon this house we want to release upon you. I want you to receive it with all your heart. Let's stretch our heads towards them. Father bless them. Prophesy over their lives. We pray for your spiritual lives. You are stepping into unusual levels of progress in the spirit accuracy of understanding access to the mysteries of the kingdom powerful prayer life fresh grace for the journey we pray for the works of your hands your job your school your business whatever it is that you do may the hand of god come upon you you will prosper on all sides we call for favor into your life in the name of jesus may the presence of god mantle you and go with you and open strange doors for you in the name of Jesus I bless you in the name of Jesus may the hand of the Lord rest upon you you will go and return with strange testimonies the challenges that you came here with they drop here and they never return with you in the name of Jesus thank you once again I'll just ask that dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message 
I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.